So today we are in Huntsville, Alabama. We are going to a very popular pit here known as Natural Well. It's within the Monte Sano State Park. You do have to get a permit to visit this cave, so come along with us today as we go and bounce this 190 foot pit here in Alabama. If you like my content, make sure you like and subscribe for more outdoor recreation here in the heart of TAG, which is what cavers call short for Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia. So this pit was actually Jason's first pit that he did how many years ago? 19. 19 years ago. He came here in the morning and bounced this pit and then he went to another cave in the afternoon called Fern Cave and did surprise pit that afternoon. He says he practiced for several weeks with experienced cavers learning how to climb the rope and do changeovers in a tree before he attempted this pit. So let's go check it out. There's a lot of history here. This park consists of 40 acres. It was originally first claimed by a Thomas E. Evans in September of 1887. He then later sold that 40 acres along with this cave that we're visiting today to the state of Alabama 10 years later in 1897. Now, if you're just a hiker and you want to come and hike this trail, there is a trail that goes right by this pit. It's called the Natural Well Trail. I don't know how long it is. You can certainly look that up. But this is a very nice park. There is a $5 entry fee per person when you come here. So it's probably been a good 15 years since I've been to this pit, even more since Jason's been here. There's an old structure that was built here. And then the pit is just up ahead. So that tree that Jason's looking at right now used to be the rig tree that everybody rigged to. And it's clearly now dead. So here is the pit. Now this fence that is around the pit, it was built by cavers and I'll talk about that here in a moment. I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of this cave. And what um, people have done here over the last... 150 years to get inside of this pit. So here we are at the pit known as Natural Well. There's a lot of history here going all the way back to the mid 1800s. This cave was first written about in 1859. It was published in the William Huntsville Directory. It was described as a great curiosity and it was noted at that time as 205 feet deep although it wasn't mentioned how they got that measurement. So the first um, known people to make it to the bottom of the pit was in 1888. It was a fellow by the name of Major James. He was also, or his real name was Joseph R. Scrimshaw. He organized a project to get to the bottom of this pit and I'm going to tell you how he did it. So Major Scrimshaw came from New York City. He was hired to come here as a landscape architect for the new Monte Sano Hotel. However, he became very fascinated with this pit and his job, although was to plan gardens for the hotel, he actually ended up constructing a platform that went out over this pit. He equipped it with a windlass, which is a type of a winch and he sent off to New York City for a cable and then he built a bucket which was 30 inches square and four feet deep. So he tested the system initially with a load of rocks. When the day came to go down, he got cold feet. He didn't want to be the first to go down because he was terrified that he would probably fall and um, die. So he let a gentleman by the name of Jackson Lines be the first person to go down into the pit. He was much younger than Major Scrimshaw 
Um, but he did actually end up making it down into the pit with several other people that day. And it is reported that he wrote his initials on the wall of the pit. So hopefully we can find those today and show them to you guys. That would be pretty cool because he wrote those there in 1888. So in 1927, it was reported again in the Huntsville Times that another group had built a platform going out over the pit. They used a block and tackle rig to descend and ascend. It was a few years later when the cave was visited by the state geologist, William Johnson. He and a few others came here to study the rock strata. They made a map and they used a rope ladder that was built by a sailor with one inch diameter manila rope and hand carved wooden rungs. And so they used that to get up and down into the pit, which they also used in other pits in this area as they were studying geology. Now in 1933, the Civilian Conservation Corps came to this area to help build the park, to build some cabins, some trails, and some roads. However, they became fascinated with this pit as well. They too also built a platform going out and used a windless system, which is a winch, to get up and down into the pit. They actually used a plank as a seat with a leather belt to strap them in for safety. Their goal was to remove some of the talus slope because they're um, they wanted to build an actual spiral staircase going down into the pit. However, fortunately, they never received that federal funding, so that never happened. Jason's getting ready to rig this pit. Um, there is a little bit more history I'd like to talk about, though, before we go down. Um, in the 1940s, after the CCC uh, abandoned their project, uh, landowners around here or residents burned down the platform they had left because they were worried about accidents and people going in there and it falling down and somebody falling to their death. Now up until this point no one had died in the cave however unfortunately in 1984 the only known death to date was a 25 year old female Teresa Lynn Carnes who climbed over the fence here lost her footing and fell to her death. We are not sure why she did that um, but unfortunately it cost her her life. Cavers started visiting this pit here in the 50s. They first became here uh, in 1955 using single rope technique. In 1959, it was mapped by the Huntsville Grotto. It was later published in a few publications, and I'll show you that map here in a moment. And then in 1969, it was mapped again by a caver known as Bill Terod, who's a very well-known mapper here in Alabama. In the 70s is when this fencing was installed by local cavers to try to uh, keep good relations with the park and to prevent any um, accidents from happening. So Jason's getting ready to rig the pit. So I'm going to um, start video on that and get my gear on. We're going to go down. Hopefully we'll find that signature um, from Scrimshaw where he signed it on the wall in 1888. So come along as we go down in this pit here in Alabama and check it out. Like and follow for more outdoor recreation here in the heart of TAG. We are here in Alabama today. It is beautiful outside. There are some bolts installed down here that we're going to use. We can't use the old rig tree, so I think we're going to go with this one for a backup down through the, the fencing and the wall there and then to the bolts. This is a 300 foot 10 millimeter rope. Oh, 330 10 millimeter rope that we're using today.
So there it is. This big, deep, dark, fascinating hole in the ground. Just to show you from this angle. It's obviously, this, this fence isn't going to stop anybody, but if you're not vertical trained, don't even go beyond it, especially if you're not clipped into a rope for safety. So Jason is just finishing up um, rigging the bolts. I'm going to go down first. So let's go. It's been a long time since I've done this one. I've got a little bit of butterflies in my stomach just because I haven't been here in so long. And it's a deep hole in the ground. I see the bottom.
So I just made it to the bottom and I'm gonna yell off rope for Jason. I'm sure he was, yep, there he goes, he confirmed. So now I'm gonna go over here and get out of the way. Okay! So in just initially looking around down here, this is a really old piece of metal, some type of spike that was put in the wall here during one of the early explorations, probably when the CCC was here maybe. Their goal was to remove as many rocks as they could from all of this slope because again, they wanted to build a staircase coming down here. Here comes Jason. It is such a beautiful pit. If you're not a caver, it's really hard to explain why we like to do this. It's where I find a lot of my spirituality and nature, where I find, um, I find the most peace, being underground in the belly of the earth. So there's over a thousand foot of cave passage going this way, several domes. We're gonna go down here and check it out for just a short distance. See if we can find that old signature. Here, oh wow, there's another one right here too, Jason. This is, no, the loose one. So these are just some old artifacts, probably when the CCC was here trying to, um, remove a lot of the rock from this slope here because they wanted to put that staircase in. A lot more trash down here than I remember. Yeah. So we just walked under that drippy area there. Oh, there's a bat right there, tiny little bat right there, in this very, very tall canyon passage. Lots of rocks everywhere on the floor of this cave. Pretty impressive. Well, there's another little bat hiding right there. There's an old cave register in here. Does it open? So cavers put these in caves where they can, it's like a log book. Looks like people have been writing their names oh, on that. Oh, well, we'll have to sign it. Build notes. Bob Reese Bobcat. Is it brand new? 122.23. Oh, well that's just a couple of weeks ago. Sharp, brand new. Sharpener, though. They brought a new book, but not a new pencil. So I just found the his signature that I was looking for from the first person who ever entered this pit in 1888. It's kind of hard to see. Let's see. You can see the J, R, and then there's his last name right there, etched in. Pretty cool, that's from 1888. He was lowered down into this pit in a bucket with a winch. So again, here is that signature from Scrimshaw, who was the first person to ever sit. Well, actually he was the third person, but he was the first person who had the brains, the idea to get down here in the bottom of this pit. I am, I'm just giddy about this, y'all. This kind of stuff just excites me to think about somebody and how they got down into this, this pit in the 1880s. That's, that's so impressive to me. So 
so the rest of the cave goes this way through this crawlway. It opens up into about a thousand feet of cave passage. You can feel the air moving through here. That way doesn't go anywhere. But that's where the rest of the cave is, and there's some domes over there. We're not going to do that today for time constraints, but there you go. Look at these super tall canyons. That's really cool. It's a little breezy right here. Yeah, there is a lot of trash that people have thrown in over the years. So Jason is going to get on rope first. And he's going to be frogging. I'm going to use my rope walker and my frog system until I, so I'm going to climb out of here on that and then when I get to the lip I'll switch over to my frog All system. Right. Okay. So Jason is frogging out of here. Up, up and away he goes using his ascenders. It's just almost in the, the water there, huh? Yeah. Probably a few drips. And he's going to crawl all the way to the top. I could only imagine how scary it would have been being lowered down into this pit in a wooden bucket or on a wooden plank strapped with a leather belt. I much rather prefer being on a rope with these modern day ascenders. Made in USA. 6-70-15, four-ply rating. Not sure how you tell how old a tire is. This is a tubeless tire. Uh, VF Goodrich Silvertown. This tire's probably been in here for quite some time, as well as that one over there. And Jason's still up there climbing. Just gonna show these once again. Some type of uh, hooks they were using probably when the CCC was trying to put a staircase in this cave in the 1930s. You can see Jason up there on the rope. He's probably at least a good hundred feet off the floor. Okay! So he just yelled off rope. I'm gonna approach the rope and when I get over there, I'll yell on rope and I'll start climbing. Here we go. So I just got on rope. I've only climbed up, I don't know, maybe 30 feet, got past the little spritz of water so I could stop and show you guys how beautiful this pit is from down in the bottom looking up. And we're gonna climb all the way up there. This pit is just so beautiful, but I couldn't imagine doing it in a bucket. 
and a pulley. But I just got to thinking, I bet those hooks that I saw down in the bottom of the pit were probably used to hang lanterns on because they didn't have lights like we do 150 years ago. Let's keep climbing. So here we are about halfway up, and then if you take a look down, you can see how far up we've climbed and how much more we've got to go. So I just made it up to the bolt. And just to show you how far I have come, I'm all the way down there. And now I'm gonna transition over to this rope and then I'm gonna de-rig this. It's Kelly. Did not take the knot out. Kelly, she's de-rigging the rebelay. Now, to get through the crack. Now she's got the crack attack. So we're both out of the pit, and now we're going to pull the rope. So there it is, folks. The big mystery hole in the ground here in Huntsville that's been explored since the mid-1800s. Lots of curiosity about what was in the bottom. We found the signature from the first people who set foot on the bottom in 1888. That was pretty cool. If you're interested in doing this type of activity in caving and rappelling, look up a local grotto near you. A grotto is a caving club. They're all across the United States. A lot of them lead trips for beginners and experienced people alike. If you like my content, make sure you like and subscribe for more outdoor recreation here in the heart of TAG, which is short for Tennessee, Alabama, and Georgia. 
Happy caving! Pretty cool old structure that was built here at some point. 